good evening uh, friends today we will be dealing with fronto temporal dementia current concepts and uh, this topic is a slightly difficult topic and <clears throat> we'll try and uh, see how to go about this The frontotemporal dementia, and uh, I would like to present the following uh, headings introduction and history, the epidemiology, we'll deal with neuropathology and uh, frontotemporal dementia, the genetics that have emerged in the last one decade, the clinical types of uh, frontotemporal dementia, that is behavioral variant, primary progressive aphasia, and uh, its variants like uh, non-fluent variety of uh, PPA and semantic variety of PPA and logopenic variety of uh, PPA all these are uh, also discussed and uh, we'll deal with some biomarkers neuroimaging fluid biomarkers and uh, gene specific uh, biomarkers and of course management and uh, prognosis and so these are the headings under which we are going to deal with uh, frontotemporal dementia. So frontotemporal dementia is uh, an entity that includes a group of neurodegenerative diseases and uh, uh, with symptoms predominantly behavior and uh, executive control function and language. So these are the three important aspects on a behavior executive control function and language so one of the most common type of dementia before the age 65 years of age one of the most underdiagnosed dementia as most often the symptoms overlap with the psychiatric manifestations it is considered as a third most common cause of dementia and one of the most common cause of early onset dementia when i studied the uh, md and the dm that time Frontotemporal dementia is in a one or two paragraphs after Alzheimer's disease, but in the last couple of decades, so many advances have taken place and our understanding has tremendously improved about this disease. And most of the cases are misdiagnosed as psychiatric illness. As you can see, the female dominance, females are behavioral variant things, and they are mostly misdiagnosed as psychiatric illness. So that's why it's very important to it's an interface between neurology and psychiatry and both specialties should work together to diagnose and uh, we did this in the last uh, station where i worked in manipal when we run, ran a memory clinic for about three and a half years and and some very very good cases in which we could diagnose so frontotemporal dementia is a behavioral variant that is about 50 percent and the language variants and language is very important the primary progressive aphasias and there are three primary progressive aphasias two fall to frontotemporal dementia that is semantic variant and non-fluent or agrammatic variant these fall into the frontotemporal dementia spectrum the third variety that is logopenic ppa that falls into alzheimer's disease variety so the a group of if you look at the related disorders and frontotemporal dementia which is closely related to other disorders we can say that these are a group of neurodegenerative disorders featuring progressive deterioration of behavior and language associated pathology in the frontal and or temporal lobes i'll show you a couple of mr images so behavioral variant FTD, semantic variant PPA and primary progressive aphasia, non-fluent agrammatic PPA, pronuclear palsy and basal syndrome. So all these also are studied under frontotemporal dementia spectrum, behavioral variant FTD, semantic variant, non-fluent agrammatic PPA, FTD, MND, PSP and CBS because they share common pathophysiological features which are going to discuss in the news. So if you look at them, so the behavioral variant FTD 
and it can have a many gene abnormalities and one of that we'll discuss semantic dementia or semantic PPA and the atrophy of uh, these uh, specific regions will help us in identifying this progressive non-fluent aphasia progresses markers are there first the damps will uh, so I will come back to you on that so if you look at the make at the what we call uh, <coughs> metabolic uh, things these are progranulin and uh, uh, the um, MAPT that is micro tubular associated tau and C9 ORF uh, 7 2 these will give rise these are the various uh, uh, ma molecular mechanisms that are associated with frontotemporal dementias so uh, as I said language is a very important aspect of frontotemporal dementia and we should know anatomy of the language areas especially the primary auditory that is a broadcast and you can see that angular gyrus here 39 and uh, which matches sounds and uh, visual information to words supra marginal acting posterior language speech repetition comprehension these various aspects are very important in understanding frontotemporal dementia the syndrome of primary progressive aphasia is also you know in a, the has been clubbed with this so that what do the chart things is what is it uh, sir your voice is cracking okay i'll try and my level best friend to make it a group of sonic too. okay fine so 16 uh, this is the uh, primary progressive aphasia and acquired impairment of word finding word comprehension or sentence construction this is a language disorder and whenever language disorder persists for about two, two years one thing uh, see acquired impairment of word finding word comprehension or sentence construction the language disorder uh, which should persist for about one or two years then you can call it as a primary progressive aphasia and <clears throat> okay the history is like this the case of FTD was described in 1892 by Arnold Pick in a patient who presented with a slow in 1911 uh, identified an associate this entity pick and which I'm going to show you later and label it as pick disease the diagnosis is challenging as most of the symptoms overlap with psychiatric symptoms and uh, <coughs> first described in 1982 who studied six patients with progressive aphasia and labeled it as slowly progressive aphasia without generalized dementia and it is also uh, known as dementia of frontal type by Neri and Snowden and frontal lobe dementia of non Alzheimer's type and that's in 1990 so the, the all the, subsequently all these things have culminated into frontal temporal dementia it's uh, the awareness is increasing due to improved diagnostic modalities so in 2013 meta analysis of 73 studies of early onset dementia shows that FTD is the most common prevalent condition the prevalence is ranging from 3 to 26 percent it could be still underestimated as misdiagnosis as psychiatric illness is common so look at the epidemiology of uh, this this is for lack in people in uh, people aging between 45 to 65 and 40 percent will have a of dementia 
10 to 27 percent are autosomal dominant inheritance or the vertical inheritance what we call and 15 percent of these patients develop a myotrophic lateral sclerosis and 15 percent of patients with als only known in environmental risk factor for ftd is head injury it is 3.3 uh, more likely to have head injury in ftd increases the risk of uh, frontotemporal and only risk factor known okay so this is the gross FG of this country and female ratios are thank you all right okay then done 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 we will do that top video right okay okay uh, pretty uh, sex distribution look at the male and female are mostly equal in distribution and if you look at the behavioral variant ftd is the most common 50 to 60 percent and fluent ppa and square occupy the remaining uh, 40 percent cases and so so this is a main uh, distribution of ft and we'll see and all and if you look at the anterior part of the brain and this is a total there will be uh, atrophy of the brain in the frontal and temporal regions with the preservation of the posterior aspect of the you know, brain. This, this pathophysiology is gliosis, mixed body. So, uh, FTLD, tau, this is X and PS, and uh, TDP protein A, B, and C, that is a TDP group about uh, two thirds, and F FUS, and this is C9 or F72. So these are the various pathological spectra which have been described with uh, frontotemporal dementia. And these various clinical phenotypes come under frontotemporal low body degeneration, which is called FTLD. And as you have seen, the various types of uh, gene defects, tau, TDP, FUS, and these will give rise to different types of uh, phenotypes and uh, which we'll discuss in great detail later on. The frontal circuits and that is cognition and behavior circuits that are affected are very, very important and the salience processing uh, network, salience network that is in the medial frontal lobe, frontoinsular cortex and from there the temporal region which controls the social and emotional behavior. This is an intrinsic uh, connectivity network and the executive control network which is in the dorsal lateral prefrontal lobe and the salience processing network which I mentioned. The executive control network is the lateral dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex and parietal which looks up the cognitive aspects. These are disturbed in frontotemporal dementia giving rise to aberrant motor behavior, apathy and disinhibition. These two networks, salience network is very important and executive control network is very important for understanding the frontotemporal dementia. So one century ago and this is the PICS bodies what you are seeing in this and after Arnold PICS original patient descriptions of a century ago 15 years after the Arnold PICS original patient descriptions Alzheimer described unique pathological inclusions in the brains of two of the original patients called them pig bodies and thus pig's disease that has resulted in the right so the neuropathology presently is gliosis neuronal loss and microvacular changes start initially in anterior cingulate gyrus which is a part of salience network and gradually spread to anterior temporal lobe frontal lobe and insular cortex and anterior cingulate cortex so the, these things will give rise to various phenotypes and uh, the neurons that are affected are called one economo neurons which are uh, uh, which show early onset of neurodegeneration in these specialized neurons in layer 5 in the above mentioned areas that mediate high speed connections that are necessary for initiative judgment and emotional responsiveness and which are affected in FTD. So these one economo neurons which are in the layer 5b projection neurons they are frontal insula anterior cingulate cortex more than right more than left 
and they are seen only humans and great apes elephants and where uh, these these are these mediate the very rapid uh, emotional behaviors and they are vulnerable in uh, behavioral variant ftd and these are the regions which are seen here these uh, neurons are degenerated first in the beginning of the uh, the early in the onset of the degeneration early loss of one icon one neurons are seen in the all the peaks and uh, fronto uh, temporal this is the dementia these are the neurons which are in these two diseases are not in alzheimer's disease okay so early loss of uh, icon one neurons so the four microtubular associated uh, uh, the uh, tau protein degenerations are seen pig bodies and uh, tangles and astrocyte degenerations neurofibrillated tangles so these are all spectrum of neuropathology that's encountered in frontotemporal dementia and if you look at that the no, the now the language pattern they, we said there are three types a non fluent variant of ppa which is a tau related and tdp43 related which is type c is in a semantic variant which causes the atrophy of anterior uh, temporal lobe logopenic variant uh, ppa that is uh, related to um, uh, this type of alzheimer's disease which is in the parallel cortex uh, the atrophy is seen so by visually looking at the atrophic regions also you will be able to identify the phenotypes so the neuropathology that is a uh, tar dna binding protein 43 are microtubule associated protein tau are fused in sarcoma protein account for almost all cases of uh, ftld based on this the ftd was sub into three types ftd tdp plus the look at the ftd uh, tdp around 50% of cases of ftld account for ftld tdp this patterns of uh, internuclear or cytoplasmic or cortical association they are subclassified into a b and c subtypes and which uh, we need to draw that match the tau is approximately 50% the subtypes of cortical basal degeneration progressive supranuclear palsy and pics this is these are all tau bodies and they are all now part of uh, frontotemporal uh, lobe degeneration types and uh, first is the third type In the 10% of cases, the FTLD accounts for FTLD first. Most often, these patients have an early onset psychosis, and that's a characteristic feature for first and disinhibition and other behavioral abnormalities, which we'll see in the clinical features section without any motor deficit. And they demonstrate the first immunoreactive inclusions, predominantly dentate gyrus. So that uh, uh, the pathology which is very very interesting and with with not cup and you can see the familial variety 50% is familial and sporadic is 60% the genes that are incriminated are uh, the progranulin gene that is 17q21 uh, long arm from 9p short arm 21 c9 orf that is chromosome 9 outer uh, frame of 72 chromosome 17 the long arm 21 m so every uh, variant ftd and ftd mnd and they, they involve the microtubular associated tau progranulin mutation seen in or of 72 chromosome 9 open reading frame 72 these account for 60% of all inherited ftld There is forty percent are family history positive. Out of these, these three account for majority of the FTLD. The, the as I said, microtubular associated uh, 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 tau protein encode for seventeen long arm twenty one and GRN the granule for granulin encodes for point three two and the chromosome nine open reading frame seventy two gene mutation is the most common cause of uh, FTD and ALS spectrum and it constitutes for about twenty five percent of familial cases of FTLD due to expansion of a uh, non coding hexa nucleotide repeat now this in mind this is an this is not a tri nucleotide this hexa nucleotide repeat that's what causes the C nine ORF seventy two.
So uh, the MP, MEMPT mutations, the tau mutations are first to be identified as the cause of the inherited FTD. And the microtubule of the cytoskeleton and uh, it will become dysfunctional and instable with increased propensity of the tau self aggregation that leads to neurodegeneration. The progranulin is involved in modulation of inflammation, axonal growth and wound repair and mutation will make it dysfunctional. Other mutations are also seen that is the TDP43 uh, and FUS and uh, valosin containing protein that are VCP, charged multivesicular body protein 2 bits that is CHMP 2B. These are other mutations which are less commonly encountered as I said the MAPT, GRN and C9, ORF72 are more commonly known. So now looking at this now the, the classification now we have again going to read these in a clinical uh, uh, phenotype presentations based on the pattern of atrophy on MRI and on autopsy section the clinical presentations of FT is further divided into behavioral variant FTD, primary progressive aphasia and primary progressive aphasia can be of a agrammatic or non-fluent variant or semantic variant the left side semantic variant PPA and right side semantic variant PPA have different presentations clinically. So the neuropsychological profile is most consistent with uh, generally intact cognitive functioning with mild isolated confrontation naming difficulties to start with. The early symptoms to family and neurologists are increased time spent in the repetitive games like solitaire. More likely to start a conversation with strangers and uh, increased ice cream eating, gaining weight, impulsive spending. Increase in hours spent walking and picking up, recycling from roadside stuff. So these are the earliest symptoms that families uh, observe in these cases where the family history is positive in 40% of the cases. The behavioral variant FTD is dominated by behavioral symptoms and these are apathy, loss of empathy, hyper orality and social disinhibition. The disinhibition is increased sexual desire and use of inappropriate language. The apathy is manifest as a loss of interest in which the patient may lie staring at the walls and repetitive behaviors that is simple or complex and collecting scrap material and hyper orality, increased consumption of sugar rich diet. These are the various observ the observations made. So early behavioral disinhibition that is socially inappropriate behavior, loss of manners or decorum, impulsive rash or careless actions. And early apathy or inertia, early loss of sympathy or empathy, diminished response to other people's needs and feelings, diminished social interest, interrelatedness or personal warmth, early preservative, stereotyped or compulsive, ritualistic behavior, simple repetitive movements, complex ritualistic behaviors, altered food preferences, binge eating, increased consumption of alcohol, oral exploration or consumption of uh, inedible objects, so three of the following behavioral cognitive symptoms must be present to meet the criteria. Ascertainment requires that symptoms must be persistent or recurrent rather than single or rare events. So that means any three and I will show you the small shortened form of this in the next slide. <coughs> so uh, the, 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 the other one is neuropsychological profile, executive generation deficit uh, with uh, relative sparing of memory and visual spatial function that means you will not be able to do a trial a test or trial b test but you can remember very well so memory and visual spatial functions are preserved but executive control functions are absent and this will see relative sparing of episodic memory there is a character episodic memory impairment is characteristic of Alzheimer's disease usual but in FTD the remote episodic memory may be defective so that is a characteristic feature there will be related to the spatial skills there's a relative skills you know, visual spatial skills okay so these are the, some of the important aspects of behavioral variant so now to summarize the possible behavioral variant FTD three out of six early behavioral disinhibition, early apathy or inertia, early loss of emotional reactivity, sympathy and empathy, perservative, stereotype or compulsive ritualistic behavior, hyper orality and dietary changes like uh, eating excessive ice creams and sweets 
executive predominant cognitive dysfunction not memory dependent so out of these any three will uh, make us suspect that individual is going to frontotemporal dementia so there's a prod, uh, possible there's a probable under the definite ftld pathology of course definite it requires histopathological evidence or a known pathogenic mutation also will be sufficient and gradual onset recurrence and progression of more than three of the behaviors and uh, cognitive features okay uh, if they are associated with an atrophy on MRI or CT or PET or SPECT, then it will be probable. Then histopathology will make it definite. So that's how these three are. Okay. So salience network, as I was telling you, is a vulnerable in frontotemporal dementia, and which is a very important network, which I said is it connects the medial frontal lobe, anterior cingulate gyrus, and insula along with medial temporal lobe. And this is the uh, the clinical deterioration that the CDR rating shows as the atrophy increases, the severity or the surgeon's network vulnerability increases, the severity of uh, disease is increased. That, so it is targeted consistently as shown by various others as mentioned here. And uh, this network is uh, early in, uh, involved and creates a lot of uh, functional disability as the disease progresses. The right temporal variant, as you can see, is also another prominent variant where there's emotional blunting, loss of empathy, rigidity, and these people may show prosopognosia, famous of faces, and the language deficits emerge with the spread to left temporal lobe, and apathy and disinhibition develop as if they go to the medial frontal circuits. So when you have the onset of the disease in the right temporal lobe, frontal lobe or salience network, the clinical phenotype differs. And some are ALS and motor neuron disease overlaps are there in 15 to 30 percent between behavioral variant FTD and ALS in familial. It's found in almost 30 percent in autopsy cases and genetically linked by C9, uh, the chromosome 9 outer frame 72 path by TDP 43 suspected based on weight loss, suitable body effect and UMN element signs. Usually Alzheimer's disease doesn't have any signs, but frontotemporal dementia, you have to carefully look for upper motor or lower motor neuron signs. And there may be features of uh, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, which foretells a poor prognosis. And there may be features of uh, the progressive supranuclear palsy or cortico basal uh, degeneration. The port Postmortem diagnosis is about 17% of uh, BVFTD and uh, motor features may not evolve for years. Dysphagia, slurred saccades may be the early signs to suggest that there is something underlying cortico basal degeneration. So uh, the difference between Alzheimer's disease and FTD is presence of uh, motor signs. That's very, very important for us to understand. Okay, now we will see. Then, yeah. Okay, so the neurological assessment may have frontal release signs, snout reflex, grasp reflex, palmamental reflex, which you will have to do, may have Parkinsonism features, may have axial rigidity more than appendicular rigidity, suggestive of Parkinsonism, PSP or CBS, and slow saccades. There may be screening for motor neuron disease and fasciculations and LMN and UMN signs, and signs of poor grooming and hygiene are seen, loss of manners. Flat effect, silly child-like effect, poor eye contact, restlessness, abolic compulsions and bathroom he keep, keeps on visiting bathroom every five minutes. And these are the compulsions that are encountered in frontotemporal dementia behavioral variant. You will do a trials B test, Wisconsin Scott sort, stoop test, impaired attention. Attention is uh, assessed by digits forward and episodic uh, remote episodic memory tests and recent memory episodic uh, to differentiate between Alzheimer's disease and frontotemporal dementia are done and facial expression recognition theory of mind of some of the social cognition deficits impulsive responses perservative responses confabulatory responses sphere words during the list generation by uh, letter starting with f 
disinhibited response on mmsc write a sentence he will write sentence like i love you have fun in the hell and so these type of uh, uh, the uh, deficits can be seen and this is a stroop test which is uh, depicted here you have uh, you have to read the color which is written in a different color and uh, the there may be perservative errors more discriminating than overall executive scores and this is a set shifting uh, trial test which is a model here there is a trial a and trial b and memory variably affected special skills are spared you can see the uh, connection under the star formation it can be done visual special function and memory are preserved but executive control function the trial a and trial b test are affected badly in this case and salience network vulnerability as i have already told you and shown you this slide is commonly encountered here you can see the pathology here the pathology of uh, the focal atrophy the focal atrophy in the temporal lobe and you see the atrophy in the frontal with preservation of the posterior regions but there is a lot of atrophy in the frontal regions and left inferior frontal and anterior insula left inferior frontal and the anterior insula are affected in the nfa that is non fluent variety of uh, primary progressive aphasia and semantic variant primary progressive aphasia is anterior temporal cortex you can see this the anterior temporal cortex atrophy will be seen and logopenic or left temporal parietal cortex and this is the logopenic variety of uh, temp the uh, primary progressive aphasia so a grammatic or uh, the uh, nfa that is non fluent variety and impairment of grammar and fluency but not word comprehension that this is the most commonly encountered logopenic it is impairment of word finding naming and uh, repetition but not word comprehension or grammar that is mostly associated with ad and you can see the uh, the region which is uh, showing the atrophy the semantic variety you can see the semantic variety is the anterior temporal lobe impairment of word comprehension but not fluency or grammar so this also the so this uh, this actually you should you should read both primary progressive aphasias and the for temporal lobe uh, dementias frontal or temporal lobe degenerations together we'll have another class subsequently on primary progressive aphasias but try and synthesize your mind to these topics first the uh, the agrammatic variant of uh, ppa or non fluent variety the predominant deficit is impairment in language structure and praxis apraxia of speech a grammatism omission of closed class words such as a d non fluent speech halting or hesitant speech apraxia in the apraxia of speech is due to loss of connections between the frontal opercular and supplementary motor area that's how that causes the apraxia of the speech in these individuals and uh, uh, semantic variant the deficits of semantic knowledge but with preserved speech fluency symptoms will differ when it is left sv ppa semantic variant ppa or right svppa symptoms are related to early atrophy of the anterior temporal lobe which i have shown you the anterior temporal lobe gets atrophied in semantic variant ppa and the early features are word finding difficulties especially for verbs in the critical stages patient substitute specific words with uh, superordinate categories example vehicles for car as the disease advances loss of word meaning increases and they have trouble recognizing what is shown to them in the left sided uh, semantic variant primary progressive aphasia the right sided what how it differs is early features are behavioral while language problems occur late in the disease the early behavioral problems are due to involvement of the right anterior temporal lobe and orbital frontal cortex slowly visual temporal association area posterior temporal association area are involved in giving rise to visual agnosias and prosopognosia so you just remember the dorsal stream from the visual association areas and the ventral stream which goes to the temporal lobe and that gets affected those networks get disturbed 
uh, the motor symptoms are characteristic of frontotemporal dementia and these are absent in Alzheimer's disease. MND 40% may have motor neuron disease with the lower motor neuron signs or upper motor neuron signs. The important thing is if you get an ALS case in exam, you will have to do a detailed cognitive assessment, especially executive control function testing you should do. And Parkinson's disease is in 20% present with early Parkinsonism. Cutco Bessel syndrome and PSP and the behavioral variant may be sometimes associated with the Cutco Bessel syndrome or progressive supranuclear palsy, in which earlier may be associated with alien lump phenomena, asymmetrical Parkinsonism and dystonia. So these are the common features that uh, you'll have to carefully look for all cases and whenever you get frontal temporal dementia or amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. So let's look at the agrammatic variety. In patients with agrammatic PPA, that is reduced speech production, word finding difficulties, circumlocalations, and grammatical errors. The imaging shows atrophy of the dominant inferior frontal lobe, which I'll show you again. If it is associated with motor neuron disease, 30% of ALS patients have coexistent symptoms of FTD, most often associated with uh, chromosome 9. Uh, that the frame 72 mutation which is due to expansion of the as i said earlier hexanucleotide repeat not a trinucleotide repeat so ad has a prominent deficits in memory that is alzheimer's disease near normal neurological examination and neuroimaging may show generalized atrophy of the brain but ftd ftd shows the uh, focal atrophy than generalized atrophy and DLBD, dementia with Lewy body disease, common symptoms are hallucinations and executive dysfunction. And there may be fluctuation in cognition in DLB and it shows predominant Parkinsonian features. Uh, if it is PSP, the history of dysphasia, postural instability with early falls, pseudobulbar features help in differentiating PSP from FTD. However, PSP and CBD may present as non that is the uh, variety of uh, PPA, non-fluent variety or uh, behavioral variant FTD in the initial stages. So these three are a problematic area in examination. You'll have to be very careful. When you get a case, you'll have to think of uh, these possibilities in all these three. Okay, right. Yes. Another uh, differential diagnosis which we have to encounter is, as I said, depression. Now, most of the FTD patients are treated by psychiatrists in the early course of illness because of an overlap of symptoms. So it's an interface between neurology and psychiatry and more often behavioral variant FTD is misdiagnosed as psychiatric illness. Symptoms such as emotional withdrawal and apathy may be confused with depressive illness, but the lack of sadness, which is typical of the two depression, which is lacking in patients with FTD. This this is a very important aspect to differentiate the lack of sadness. The mutations that affect chromosomal 9 have been found to have affiliation with bipolar disorders and schizophrenia. So that's uh, the molecular mechanism for this. So if you look at uh, the changes where if you want to differentiate the FTD from uh, Alzheimer's disease, the early changes, uh, if you notice this amnesia in Alzheimer's disease, visuospatial disturbance, a calicleia and anomia. In FTD, behavioral changes, clover brucey and language functions are disturbed, stereotypy of the speech. What are the late changes? The A calicleia, clover brucey personality changes come late in Alzheimer's disease. In FTD, this whole spectrum, amnesia, visual spatial disturbance, comprehension problems and decreases auditory comprehension comes late. The posterior hemispheric atrophy in Alzheimer's disease, anterior hemospheric atrophy in the frontotemporal dementia. Predominantly cholinergic glutaminergic system defects in the Alzheimer's disease and serotonergic and uh, probably dopaminergic deficits in the case of uh, FTD. So here in frontotemporal dementia, there is no role for donapazil, there is no role for memantin and these are mostly treated with sertraline and other uh, SSRIs. So that's the important aspect. If you diagnose FTD, please don't give donor So non-fluent variety of PPA, the clinical diagnosed by impairment in language functions, predominantly agrammatism, 
the speech to be effortful halting speech or at least to two of the features like uh, impaired comprehension of sentences with uh, complex syntax and sparing of single word comprehension and spared object knowledge the amazing features just remember this is important this is left posterior frontal insular region is atrophied histopathological evidence of uh, presence of pathogenic genetic mutation along with probable criteria which we will uh, discuss shortly about the genetic criteria and then that also will make it definite diagnosis of uh, nfv UPA. so how it is differentiated from uh, behavioral variant if you look at the social symptoms disinhibition inappropriate behavior is not seen in primary progressive aphasia but it's seen in 75 percent loss of empathy is 50 percent more here aggression is seen in behavioral variant personal neglect and loss of personal hygiene in behavioral variant is not encountered in the primary progressive aphasia syndromes the emotional symptoms of apathy and depression are in behavioral variant only not in non-fluent variety and the existing behaviors like over eating and uh, preference for sweets is seen in behavioral variant the language symptoms of impaired word finding a grammatism apraxia of speech are more 100 percent or the characteristic features in non-fluent variety so these are the important things which uh, one should remember in differentiating these two okay so when do you do semantic variety ppa clinically if the patient has impaired confrontation naming impaired single word comprehension in addition to any three of the following and what are the three of the following objects impaired object knowledge surface dyslexia that means with the spared reputation you will not be able to read spared grammar and motor speech production what neuroimaging shows is as i said earlier anterior temporal lobe atrophy as evidence on imaging in addition to above which makes svpp a probable diagnosis histopathological evidence of genetic mutations which we will discuss subsequently will be also seen right single word comprehension deficit production of speech while describing a picture may reflect a near normal word output but interspersed with the frequent filler words a different pattern of episodic memory deficit which i already alluded to in which they recall recent events that is recent memory is not impaired but difficulty in recalling the remote memory that remote episodic memory problem this pattern of episodic memory loss is different from alzheimer's disease in which there is more deficit in recalling recent events so recent memory impairment is a characteristic feature of alzheimer's disease remote memory may be affected in frontotemporal dementia but not recent memory neuroimaging as i said is anterior lobe uh, atrophy typically asymmetric at the time of onset of uh, this problem so we can uh, differentiate all the three and uh, ftd agrammatic ppa semantic ppa and you can see the sex distribution males are more in semantic as well as ftd behavioral variant but agrammatic is females and early age and familial tendency is rarely seen in semantic that's a characteristic feature it is sporadic and whereas others have shown the familial feature motor neuron disease is ftd only not in other places personality changes apathy disinhibition these are all behavioral variant ftd problems and agrammatic tends to remain normal depression is common uh, sometimes this is right side problem semantic ppa you have see behavioral problems but on left side they are not seen and uh, so they look at uh, look for ALS and Parkinsonian features in cases of uh, behavioral variant. They overlap with PSP and uh, CBD in agrammatic. Look for ALS often normal in semantic variant. So neuropsychology wise, and it is a uh, language assessment for uh, both types of primary progressive aphasias and uh, verbal apraxia comprehension to be tested, naming, verbal memory working memory has to be tested whereas in behavioral variant it is set shifting inhibition good drawing and uh, poor generation so neuroimaging features and frontal ventral and insular cingulate atrophy is seen hypermetabolism on pet and anterior temporal amygdala and insular atrophy and uh, in a grammatic it is frontal insular 
and the atrophy which we have already seen and semantic it could be bilateral in your imaging atrophy which i'll show you some of the mris which are characteristic of uh, these diseases the evaluation is characteristically inquiry into the family history and history of progression of behavioral changes the neuropsychological testing and stressing on uh, executive control function testing neuroimaging to rule out treatable causes of dementia you do rft lft thyroid function test vitamin b12 and complete blood picture so in all cases of dementia it is essential that you do a vitamin b12 and thyroid toxicology screen and screen for neuro infections and after that we'll come to the final uh, conclusion so neuropsychological assessment uh, neurocognitive assessment in patients with the uh, behavioral variant demonstrates defective executive task with the uh, minimal or no involvement of visuospatial domains and memory which i have shown you the uh, the mri image the impaired motor loria test it may show predominant atrophy of the right temporal or frontal lobe and atrophic patterns may vary between different mutations and which we will see so different mutations will give rise to different type of atrophies so we have so many uh, batteries available from which you can uh, derive your tests uh, so that will, will shift to the biomarkers a biomarker is an indicator of uh, biological and pathological processes that can Sir, be Sir, can you show that test slide again yeah we'll, be, we'll again come back to this one these are batteries which you can use yes but they are very extensive batteries and so uh, i what i showed you with the um, executive control function test those are very important for this okay, okay you can note down you can take a photograph Thank it's you. available on that so a biomarker is an indicator of biological and pathological processes that can be objectively measured and indicates pharmacological responses to a therapeutic intervention so we have neuroimaging biomarkers fluid biomarkers gene specific biomarkers in the dementia spectrum which we have to study and in our uh, tertiary care hospital from south india in a span of one year we saw about 52 patients were analyzed in our memory clinic who are diagnosed to have dementia out of which 10 patients are found to have frontotemporal dementia and among 10 patients who were diagnosed to have ftd8 were uh, falling into possible bb ftd group and two patients to agrammatic variant of uh, primary progressive aphasia and this type of luria graphic test which is depicted here and the clock drawing test which we see basically that helps in uh, uh, rapidly testing the executive control function and this is very very important apart from the trial test which you can see so the biomarkers are uh, structural changes in brain and uh, the uh, functional changes in the brain the structural changes are uh, both gray matter and white matter can be you know affected and uh, can be studied on uh, normal MRI and brain atrophy especially in T1 weighted MRI to detect changes in the gray matter the brain volume rate of brain atrophy volume of specific uh, brain regions of interest and uh, so you can quantitatively do, do the volume estimation also but visual rating scales help also to distinguish between frontotemporal dementia from Alzheimer's disease with a good specificity of 81 percent if it is experienced experts are telling you there are four uh, subtypes of uh, behavioral variant have been identified which i'll show one or two temporal dominant frontal dominant frontotemporal frontotemporal parietal dominant so the genetic forms of ftd they are really they are good uh, they, they show characteristic uh, atrophy patterns asymmetrical frontotemporal parietal atrophy predominantly seen in uh, the pregranulin mutations and symmetric involvement of anteromedial temporal and uh, orbitofrontal lobes is seen mapt mutation associated with ftd and you can see c9 orf72 has got a generalized atrophy the left sided uh, semantic variant ppa predominantly have asymmetric left sided anterior inferior temporal lobe atrophy and non-fluent variety of uh, ppa predominantly left-sided inferior frontal and insular involvement so characteristically these areas are involved in atrophy asymmetric frontal and temporal atrophy in a patients with uh, uh, frontotemporal dementia and you can see the frontal lobe as well as this thing is atrophied and the posterior aspects are really they are okay but uh, this area is uh, atrophied okay uh, the posterior regions are very much preserved that uh, the frontal and temporal lobes are so much atrophied and the frontal temporal dimension excuse me uh, hello yeah yeah 
निहाल मैं क्लास में हूँ अभी मैं थोड़ी देर में करता हूँ So this is the anterior atrophy. You can see the dilatation of the ventricles and the atrophic and prominent cell size, and preserved posterior aspect, which which will be affected in all Alzheimer's disease than in this thing. Posterior cortical atrophy is a feature of that. So the white matter changes are also very important. The diffuse sensor DTI imaging is a technique used for assessing white matter connections of the brain, and white matter diffusibility abnormalities are found to appear before the occurrence of grey matter changes in FTD. so dti imaging is not only very helpful in differentiating between subtypes of ftd but it also helps in detection of early changes before disease onset and can also differentiate between individuals with and without dementia so especially useful in family family history positive cases so the the white matter tracts are characteristically affected in behavioral variant it is unsinuate fascicular singulum bundle and genu of corpus callosum are predominantly involved in non fluent variety it is a left orbito frontal and anterior temporal white matter that is superior longitudinal fasciculus is association fibers predominantly in the non uh, fv i mean the non fluent variety and the semantic variety shows asymmetric inferior temporal white matter predominant in the left sided so evidence has shown that dta can differentiate between frontal temporal dementia and ad with a sensitivity of 78% and specificity of 68% And then the functional imaging is a spect with the uh, uh, TC ninety nine M ECD is the compound which is essential in differentiating FTD from AD with a specificity ranging from eighty to ninety six percent and specificity of sixty uh, five to ninety eight percent by various others. The FTD PET detects alteration in the brain metabolism that may occur before the appearance of grey matter atrophy in the normal MRI. the asymmetrical low glucose metabolism in orbital frontal cortex dorsal lateral frontal cortex which is the executive control function area and anterior temporal poles is highly specific for behavioral variant ftd with a sensitivity and specificity that ranges up to 95% this vary between different subtypes of uh, ppa such as asymmetrical bilateral temporal hypermetabolism seen in semantic variant ppa whereas non fluent variety left inferior frontal gyrus dorsal lateral frontal cortex and the single cortex hypermetabolism is seen in non fluent variety so another technique that is used is arterial spin labeling asl which measures brain perfusion non invasively in which the water protons in arterial blood are magnetically labeled asl may show hyperperfusion in amygdala insula and medial frontal lobes in ftd that is a salience network the brain perfusion measured by asl can be used as an early biomarker in preclinical stages of ftd such as decrease in cerebral blood flow can be seen in pre symptomatic individuals who carry these mutations that is pre granulin and mapt the more uh, tau mutations and uh, there is something called a resting state functional mri or as fmri intrinsic functional connectivity between different brain regions can be measured by this technique in ftd there is a decreased connectivity between anterior cingulate cingulate gyrus and fronto insular region there is reduced connectivity of temporal lobe in semantic variant and in progranulin mutations left frontal connectivity is reduced so it's basically a play of uh, dysfunction of the networks that's very important and you have to see various networks and amyloid and tau pet tracers are used so these tracers can be used to differentiate between frontal temporal dementia and alzheimer's disease such as pets with amyloid tracer pittsburgh compound can detect amyloid beta deposits with high sensitivity which may indicate alzheimer's disease pathology as various types of ftd or pittsburgh compound be negative so these are the uh, pet studies and in ftd patients mapt mutations associated with three repeat and four repeat tau pathology there is increased uptake of uh, this ligand which is flow which is seen in temporal cortex and frontal cortex and these are very advanced studies which are not commonly done in our country so mri is a ruling normal fighter level or amyloid angio atrophy in the various focal regions which i have described and similarly uh, pet stressors also are used and we have already discussed the sensitivity and specificity of these variables now we'll go to the fluid markers csf amyloid beta and tau there is no definite csf biomarker for the diagnosis of ftd but the csf biomarkers are used to differentiate 
FTD from AD. Elevated levels of uh, total tau was for tau, that is P tau or T tau, and decreased levels of uh, uh, amyloid beta are found in Alzheimer's disease, that is elevated tau, decreased amyloid beta, which were found to be normal in FTD, that's how they are helpful. If you look at the neurofilament proteins, and which are major components of the neuroaxonal cytoskeleton, which play important role in synapse and axonal transport, the increased level of NFL in blood and CSF reflects axonal damage, and serves as a promising biomarker in the monitoring and prognosis of FTD patients. The levels of NFL are highly elevated in progranulin mutations and varied levels in the C9ORF72 expansions and there is hexanucleotide and low levels in MAPT mutations. So there are some changes with some differentiation we can. So that gives us gene biomarkers and the gene biomarker progranulin. Progranulin is a protein compound which has important role in neurite growth and inflammation. This, the mutations that affect progranulin reduce the blood and CSF levels of uh, progranulin to 25 to 40 percent of the normal levels. So, blood CSF levels of progranulin enables the discrimination of uh, pre-symptomatic and symptomatic GRN mutation carriers from non-carriers with high sensitivity and specificity up to 100 percent. The DPR are dipeptide repeat proteins translated from the C9 order of 7 to repeat expansions can be also studied or found to be elevated in patients with uh, this mutation. So these are the various uh, chromosomal, uh, we have already uh, recited most of them. You should remember GRN, uh, C9 over F7 to MAPT, VCP and TD43. Uh, these are the important mutations which you have to remember. And various uh, micro mechanisms which are described. So let's see this and this is this is gem of a slide. and. The most common genetic subtypes of frontotemporal dementia. This is a microtubular associated uh, tau, p tau, gain of function. The mutation mechanism is gain of function, accumulation of defective tau, which the pathology will give rise to a enhanced neurogeneration, neurodegeneration. If it is a pregranulin GRN mutation, this is a loss of function here, loss of GRN secretion, and this also gives rise to problem. Exanucleotide repeat expansion C9 over of 7 to and this is also defective function giving rise to neurodegeneration. So these are the important aspects which I see and you can see visually also visually you can see and identify if you have a suspect isolate gyrus is it a cingulate gyrus or you know temporal lobes? Is it an anterior temporal lobe, internal lobe? And you see the MAPT. This is the pregranulin, progranulin uh, atrophies. And if you look at the MAPT, this is the frontal lobe and amygdala, and this is the temporal lobe. And in C9 OR of 7 to it is generalized. Usually it's not a specific area, all areas are involved. So focal atrophy in this uh, experienced radiologist will be able to tell us the and these atrophic regions are going to increase as the disease progresses and that's the prognostic value of five to six years i'll show you another slide where these regions will increase and so various genetic defects can be identified by the focus focal atrophy seen in this and the visual ratings of atrophy also can be compared and they are very reliable you can see the atrophy here in the temporal lobe and the medial temporal lobe and it so Progranulin mutations. You can see this how, how this much how much atrophy is seen in the temporal lobe. Under temporal dementia, you can see this we have already seen the anterior region is so much atrophied and preserved region here. So the progranulin mutations, 5% prevalence in FTD and 7 to 23% in familial FTD, all induce haplo infancy. That is 50% of normal granulin protein levels are detected and you can have the types of behavioral variant or primary progress or cartilobasal syndrome. They are marked by apathy, volition, may show preservations, poor effort and tasks, concrete responses like I don't know always. Language predominant presentations feature word finding deficits and naming problems and they are very, very important. Uh, uh, and see the, why, why we, when we study 
say this, we come to know how to examine, how to take the history of uh, the youth, and you see the atrophy of focal atrophy of the frontal and the temporal mutations, the posterior aspects are relatively preserved in this case. War F7 to MF6, so repetition, one of age of onset, 58 to 60 years. It's got a with psychotic features and somatic hallucinations are from wide atrophy patterns in this case. Different changes which you have been I'm not going to go through them again. So you can see the different patterns of uh, uh, the way you can see now there's a diffuse atrophy in these cases and not in a particular area here. So there are some clinical pulse which you can see. The MAPT mutation. PSP like symptoms, bilateral knife edge frontotemporal atrophy in pigs, which you have seen, that is FTL, the tau. TDP, it is at anterior temporal low predominance, delusions more common and more severe. And first, anger aged onset presentation, more severe behavioral problems, severe caudate atrophy. These are the three important things. So, brain atrophy is critically important. The frontotemporal lobar degeneration will help us and which is this slide which you have seen already help us in differentiating into three types so ftd on this side als in this side the important aspects know the various uh, molecular mechanisms and genetic mutations that are playing a part in the phenotype generation in these cases so what is the management management is caregiver education support groups social workers referral day programs, finances and power of attorneys, limits on credit cards, ATM withdrawals, weekly cash allowance. So early cessation of driving and uh, so driving risk is elevated and early FTD due to impulsivity, attention lapses and poor emotion regulation. So you have to stop the driving and occupations with the risk to self or others should be stopped and heavy machinery operators should be told not to do and truck drivers to be said, don't drive and there may be cards, apology cards in the caregiver's patients. And there is no specific treatment option available for FTD. Most often the treatment is aimed at educating the patient caregivers about the disease condition and symptomatic pharmacotherapy. Current pharmacotherapy is based on the modification of neurotransmitter systems such as selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors like uh, citalopram, trazodone, user and behavior symptoms like agitation and disinhibition. When psychosis and uh, aggression are uh, presenting symptoms, neuroleptic medications can be tried out. The randomized control trials for the efficacy of these drugs and FTD is lacking. As I said earlier, donapazil and mimantin are not to be used in FTD. And these are the other drugs which you can see, trazodone, fluoxamine, peroxidine, fluoxidine. These all can be used, cetylene, citalopram. But donapazil, no benefit. Galantamine, no benefit. May improve the behavior, but you have been no definite benefit. Volanzapine, a uh, bromocryptin, no benefit, and so dextroamphetamine can be improved. So, some of the drugs which can be tried in this open label studies support the use of SSRIs agitation, irritability, disinhibition, perservation, compulsive behaviors, hyper orality. So, a double blind placebo controlled study so supported the use of trazodone 150 milligrams to 300 milligrams for agitation, irritability, disinhibition perservative and compulsive behavior and hyper orality oxytocin also has been uh, tried the nasal nasal the trial is going on the hypersexual behaviors there is a no or city of further but can try ssris and uh, medroxy progesterone and progesterone for severe agitation or aggressive consider atypical neuroleptic such as quetiapine but increased in incidence of for drug related parkinsonism memantin and cholinester inhibitors are not effective at all you should not use them the first unhuman study in healthy volunteers and then participant granular mutations is already on. These are the ongoing studies which you can see in clinicaltrials.com. Like as I said, oxytocin for FTD and TD CSF rehabilitated to trial for progranular deficient that is transcranial Doppler. Low dose lithium for behavioral symptoms in FTD also is under trial. So SSRIs and uh, carbamazepine for traumatic brain injury associated. The progression of atrophy in the left hemisphere, you can see the green one is the visit one. And this is the green one. But visit two, the atrophy has increased in the logopenic variety of, this is the related to Alzheimer's disease. Similarly, 
the non fluent variety of uh, primary progressive aphasia has shown initially this much of uh, on functional imaging but slowly slowly various areas get involved the anterior temporal lobe is characteristically involved in semantic variant but slowly slowly other areas are also getting involved in this so maybe 9 to 11 years for uh, behavioral variant uh, in MND, it makes it very faster, 2 to 3 years, and uh, 7 years, non-fluent variety, and the semantic variant has got 12 years uh, time frame for uh, the progression into other areas for atrophy. So, in the end, I can again say that behavioral variant FDD, semantic PPA, progressive non-fluent aphasia, PSP, corticobacter syndrome, they have got various uh, genetic mutations, genetic defects which will involve the amyloid and tau proteins, DDP43 and FUS, and there are, pro, there are mutations in progranulin and C9, ORF72, MAPT, and which will give rise to various types of uh, molecular mechanism uh, that, that results in dysfunction and clinical phenotype of uh, frontotemporal dementia. Thanks for listening, and any questions or anything which you want to ask, uh, we can share the so just five minutes uh, we have our shot but solid if there are any questions of frontotemporal dementia see this is only sensitization lecture there's so much to learn but what i can say is executive control function tests are important to diagnose this and remote memory remote episodic memory impairment is another feature which will caught you know, and they, you should carefully look for primitive signs UMN signs, LMN signs, Parkinsonism features, extracular moment abnormalities to suspect that an underlying FTD along with uh, the history which should uh, reflect some behavioral abnormalities. And if there are no questions, then I will say bye bye to all. Thank you very much for uh, listening. And if there are any questions, you can send me by email also. Shall I close this? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir.